Hey guys, it's Paul once again. This time we have another VHS review, of course, and it's going to be the 1988 slasher film, Iced. Now, this is a movie uh, that is well known in slasher circles with fans of 80s slashers and I'm really not sure why because I don't think it's that good a movie I think really what people like about it is that it has a unique theme with the whole skiing and and snow theme um, but before we get into that let's look at the cover here and the cover is kind of boring we just got this guy up on a hill with some fog and some backlighting to create that epic look of some monstrous mysterious person up on a hill the cover doesn't look very horrific at all not at all. It doesn't really have any blood. It doesn't really have anything going for it. It doesn't really tell me slasher film. If you look at the title, Ice, the logo, it's not even really bloody. And we have a tagline. It says, A downhill vacation becomes a nightmare of terror. Get off the hill before you get iced. Tagline's really cool, but once again, it doesn't feel like a slasher film. There's no knife. There's no blood. If I saw this on the shelf, I'd be, hmm, interesting. Sure, it could be a horror film, but it doesn't say slasher film on it. The back seems very 80s with that design with those bright colors and it says let's see Corey and Jeff are hot for Trina and itching for a fight they devise the ultimate duel a midnight race down perilous ski slopes but when Jeff careens off the mountain and is impaled on the rocks below his gruesome death shatters the circle of friends but first of all it's not very gruesome he just falls on rocks there isn't even any blood it's kind of boring actually I would have rather seen him uh, hit his head on the rocks but he doesn't he just falls on his stomach onto the rocks. Looks kind of boring. Not gruesome at all. Years go by and the nightmare fades. Then the members of the circle are mysteriously invited back to the same resort. It's actually not the same resort. I'm pretty sure it's not the same resort because it's not even mentioned in the movie. If they were going up to the resort, I think they would have mentioned that this is the same place where Jeff died. Now it kind of boggles my mind that this is actually a well-known slasher film in slasher circles because it's really not that great a film. In fact, it takes an hour for the first kill to happen, not including the accidental death of Jeff. Um, one guy uh, is ran over by a very slow-moving bulldozer. I didn't quite get that whole death scene. The guy's car gets stuck in a ditch, then you got the killer in a bulldozer, slowly coming towards this guy, screaming. Guy's on the ground crawling, and this bulldozer is going so slow, and the bulldozer runs the guy over. What an idiot. You can't get up and run. I mean, this bulldozer is going so slow. Stupid death scene, and we really don't see the bulldozer going over the body. We just see some bloody clothes um, left behind after the bulldozer passes. Kind of boring death. Most of the deaths in the film don't happen until the last 15 minutes. Some of them are cool, but the ones that you think are going to be really cool because they set it up, it's off screen. We don't even get to see it, but I'll get into that in a second. Really what the film is about, it's about really skiing culture. And I think that's what makes this movie stand out to slasher fans. Like I said, I really don't know what it is that people like about this movie. I think it's because it's kind of unique because it has the whole snow theme. We've had movies that take place in the snow, kind of, like Silent Night, Deadly Night, or other Christmas-themed movies, but they weren't themed on snow or skiing, um, particularly. Um, so, And there are people who are interested in that, like 80s skiing movies, um, those really weird teen movies from the 80s that are kind of entertaining, so maybe those are the kind of people that would like this film. But to me, it's it's interesting, it's different, but it's not really what you would expect. Like, you would expect to see some blood splatter on the white snow and you just see that blood pop from the snow um, because of the contrast of colors but we really don't get that from this movie so I still don't quite understand or maybe people like it because of the characters in this movie the characters are kind of interesting and they're kind of fun they have some interesting dialogue they're kind of silly um, they're not flat boring characters it's just like one of those fun teen movies for the first hour Maybe that's why. It's like a teen comedy almost uh, for the first hour of the movie. It's just them hanging out at this resort. Once in a while in that first hour, they get clues or scary little trinkets that they find that reminds them of Jeff's death. But once they get past that, it's just like just teens hanging out in a cabin. You got these two guys who are fighting over the same girl. They ski for the girl in classic 80s fashion, <laughs> like in other 80s movies based on skiing and one of them loses he gets tricked by the other guy he gets furious he went there to ski he went to the cabin with that girl and she actually goes with the victor of the the race so he gets angry gets pissed off um there's a scene where he starts talking to himself at least we think he's talking to himself we learn more about that later in a weird way also he goes storms into her room with when she's with this other guy and they're both like just laughing at him and he's crying and 
the acting of this guy being angry is like so fake but so entertaining you gotta love it anyway regardless he gets so angry starts breaking glass and eventually gets to a point where he just wants to ski it off i guess go out into the slopes in the pitch dark and just ski off his anger um and this is when he falls off a cliff and falls onto some rocks not gruesome at all as the back of the box suggests then the movie moves forward four years where all these teens are mysteriously invited all to the same cabin for this kind of timeshare presentation because they love skiing they're going to take up the offer so for the next hour we get really nothing you just get goofy characters goofing off and just people just talking just rich yuppies just hanging out at this cabin Nothing really happens. One of the real estate guys, the guy who's really running this whole timeshare thing, he goes to visit them and he has like a little romantic encounter with one of the girls there. There's some talk about like some of them having an affair with this person, this girl is interested in this guy. It's just like random crap, but it feels kind of like a 80s teen movie. Maybe that's why people really like this because some people really like those sort of movies. I like them. I could sit through it, but I expect to see a horror movie here. And for the first hour, we've I just really don't feel a horror movie here, except for the introduction where this guy gets angry because his girlfriend left him for this other guy and he falls on some rocks and dies. That's like the only instance of gruesomeness in the beginning of the movie. Also, well, in that first hour also, there's one death with the bulldozer, but that's about it. For an hour, we only get that one death scene, or one murder scene, I should say. And then finally, like in the last 15 minutes of the movie, everyone starts to get knocked off one by one. One guy stabbed while eating a slice of pie. One of the girls is electrocuted in the jacuzzi. The killer throws like a boombox radio in there and she gets fried. The, the druggy guy of the group, he steps in some bear traps and I guess he just dies there. We really don't see how he dies after he gets stuck in the traps. But we see him later and he's all bloodied up. We know he didn't die from the traps, but we don't know how he died. One death that was actually really disappointing, a real letdown, was when um, the killer is about to kill this one girl. She had just seen her uh, boyfriend in the car murdered somehow. I forgot how he gets killed. But the killer is chasing her. He gets a huge ice skull off the roof, and he's about to stab her with the ice skull. And I'm like, wow, this is going to be pretty cool. And right when he's about to stab her in the head with this ice skull, it's off screen. We cut to whatever's happening inside the cabin. Real huge letdown. I would have loved to have... Uh, scene that been played out. I mean, I think the Black Christmas remake has a scene like that, which is kind of cool. And uh, I would have loved to have seen that in this movie because it's a huge, scary looking high school. Would have been perfect for this movie to show that on screen. A perfect gimmick also for this sort of movie, for a movie themed in the snow. And they waste it. They totally throw out, throw it out, and we don't get to see that awesome death what could have been the coolest death of this movie so all the friends end up dying and we're left with one girl she finds all these dead bodies i mean they die within like maybe 10 or 15 minutes of each other when she finds everyone dead instead of calling the police like a normal person would she calls the real estate guy who's running this whole timeshare thing and one thing leads to another and we realize he's the killer and I feel like it's a cheap shot because the movie's kind of played out like a whodunit almost. And I feel like how are we supposed to figure out it was him when we didn't even really meet him in the movie? It's a real cheap shot uh, for someone trying to figure out who's the killer because I feel like, oh, this stranger's the killer? That's not fair. I've been trying to figure out who's the killer the whole movie and it's some guy we didn't even meet really? That's not really cool to do to your audience, not at all. But uh, the killer happens to be the friend of Jeff who died. And that one scene in the beginning of the movie where we think he's kind of talking to himself in anger. The killer, the real estate guy, timeshare guy, he's actually there at the table with him. It's just the camera's not on him. I forget how the girl stops the killer. But uh, we move forward five years and it's the girl who survived. And she has a family now. She has a kid and they're building a snowman. And it's kind of cute and everything. But you know something's going to happen. Otherwise, they wouldn't even do this whole flash forward thing five years. And while they're putting, I think, an eye or a nose on the snowman, the killer pops out. It looks kind of cool. looks neat and everything. But it doesn't make sense when we try to think about the plot. Like, they built the snowman. How did he get inside the snowman if they built the snowman? How could the killer get in there? It doesn't make sense. I mean, it's a cool image to see the killer just pop out of the snowman and scare them both to death but how did he get in there it doesn't make sense at all for the story that's how it ends 
So that's Iced in a nutshell. It's a movie that a lot of slasher fans are familiar with. Not sure why, because it's not a very good movie. But like I said, it might be because of the whole Ice theme and some of the very uh, cheesy characters in this movie and some of the funny dialogue. That's all I could really think of. The movie shot fairly well. I think it took a really bad cheap shot at us when it decided to uh, make the killer a character we didn't even meet before. I hated that. I also hated, like I said, that whole icicle scene, which was off screen, that whole death scene. Definitely not cool. Edited fairly well, and it's just a basic slash film from the 80s, except that it has the, uh, the skiing gimmick or the snow gimmick uh, attached to it. The actors in this movie played in a few roles. There's one famous actress, and she is Lisa Loring, and she played Wednesday in the original Adams Family. I noticed that, and she's like the only real star. If you want to consider her a star, because besides this and the Adams Family, she really didn't go on to do anything uh, much. In fact, uh, her last uh, appearance, at least on IMDb, was in a porno. And uh, I was reading it, and uh, it, right next to uh, it says hooker. She played the role of a hooker in this porno, but uh, in parentheses it says non-sex role. So I guess she wanted to make that clear that although she did play in a porno, she did not, you know, uh, she wasn't a porn star in the movie. Um, your career has to take some weird turns if you end up having a non-sex role in a porno. But she hasn't really done anything else lately since that. Um, the cinematographer for this movie is pretty successful. He um, did some cinematography for The Evil Dead 2. Uh, nothing really more famous than that. I think Evil Dead 2 was like his other big famous movie so uh and there's also a guy who was i think rodney montag uh, that's his name he is a special effects guru and he's done all these title sequences for all big budget hollywood movies um and besides those guys that's the only people who were successful in this movie the director only made a few movies and that's pretty much it um nothing really else to talk about with this movie it's a interesting movie to watch once or twice, but I really don't think it's as good as some other slasher fans make it out to be. It's different, it's unique, but it's just not that good. Um, some of the deaths that had a lot of potential um, were off screen, so... Yeah, that's Iced in a nutshell, and this has been Paul with uh, SlasherIndex.com or soon to be VHSCollector.com. Keep a lookout for more reviews, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. <laughs> uh. <coughs> Jeff! You <Please>. fuckers! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? You came up here with me. I came here by myself. Why didn't you leave us alone? <laughs> Not until I finished with you. Oh, come on, you heard her, pal. Come on, just leave. This is all your fault, you son of a bitch. Listen, the lady doesn't want to discuss this any further right now. Jeff, we're friends. That's all. Sorry. Some friends. Oh, come on, shit wagon. Why don't you just take a hint, huh? Ah! Oh! Uh. Oh, you're starting to make a real asshole out of yourself, pal.